All right, guys, so Subaru closes at six o'clock. I need to pick up a part. And on top of that, I have no gas. Let's see if we make it. We made it guys, oh my gosh. So I ran to Subaru because I needed two of these suspension bolts. If you guys own like Subarus and stuff, obviously the front suspension has two bolts, one on the top, one on the bottom. If you guys are familiar, the top bolt is usually thicker than the bottom one. So I actually went and bought two of the bottom ones so I can put these on the top. These are smaller in diameter. It allows me to push the rotor in much farther equaling more camber. So that's why I went ahead and got these right in time before they closed. And uh, should I just pick up a new Debris X while we're here? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Full tank, not too bad, about $36. I don't wanna hear from all you guys far out east. I know your guys' gas is like naturally cheap over there. <laughs> but for California, 35 bucks is actually really good for a fill up on E85. But yeah, let's go ahead and head home and finish working on the camber with the STI. All right guys, so we're back at home with the STI and we need to get this wheel to fit on the car. As you can see, it is poking quite a bit and going to the camber plates. As you can see, it's maxed out. So we're gonna have to do some modifications, which is slotting the struts, poking a good amount. And with the slot, it should sink in nice and perfect with the fender. If you guys missed the previous video, we just installed the new Workmeisters. We ran into a lot of issues with the brake clearance. So the SCI obviously has these huge calipers. It was hitting the back of the wheel, kind of where the hardware is. But um, as you can see, it fits now because we are running a 25 millimeter spacer. So I was kind of forced to run a one inch spacer in the front, which in result turned into this massive amount of pokes. So we have to fix this. And that's why we're gonna be slotting the struts today. As you guys saw, we just got back from Subaru. We got the two bolts that we needed. This one is the top bolt. And as you can see, it has this kind of um, incline in it so it's wider right here and then it gets skinnier it's pretty much a camber bolt that, that comes stock with the WX and STIs and the bottom one is this one as you can tell it's just flat you can kind of see the difference the bottom one is more skinnier while the top one is much wider so with it being skinnier we are able to push the rotor in farther for more camber this hole as you can see obviously it's a circle so we pretty much make it like an oval so we can push this thing farther in um, the more you slot, obviously, the farther in it'll go. And as you can see, it's hella tilted. So <laughs> it all depends how much camber you want to run. Now there is one way that people usually slot their struts. That is getting a drill, obviously. They take the bolt out and they put it through the hole. They turn the drill on and then they push on this at the same time. So it kind of like forms its own oval as they're pushing it. That's one way to do it. I've done that method before, but honestly, I don't really like it. It's kind of messy. This time around, I'm actually gonna take the bag off and um, cut it with a Dremel. Yes, it is more work, but it honestly comes out way cleaner. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you guys what I do. But yeah, let's go ahead and remove that front bag right there and we'll get started on slotting the struts. All right guys, so this is pretty much what we're gonna be slotting, this top hole right here. I actually got the bags from my FRS. 
Um, I know these are kind of beaten old, but essentially this is what we're gonna be doing. This is a slotted top mount hole. As you can see, it's like a big oval. This one equals way more camera. I think this gave me like negative nine on the FRS, something like that. So yeah, we're pretty much gonna be doing the same thing. So people usually think to slot inwards, like just straight across like that. That's not actually the case. So the way the suspension works is when you push it in, it kind of curves at like a downward angle, kind of like that. We'll put a bolt through the hole, put the mount on the outside of the knuckle. You can pretty much trace on the bracket right here where the hole kind of like travels. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the way the hole travels on the outside and I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right guys, so this is what we came up with. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but I used this little metal pick, put that through the hole, and uh, as you can see, we got some markings right here. And uh, that's pretty much the way the rotor travels on both sides. So we're gonna be slotting in this kind of little mock-up direction. Here is the hole, about 20 millimeters. Um, I measured it before I cut it, or before I slotted it, and it was around 14 millimeters. So it's about like a six, five to six millimeter slot. Kind of see the difference. Here is a normal size versus the slotted one. So this, obviously there's no play, but once you put it in the top one, slides easily. Pretty sure you can get away with a basic Dremel, but I actually went ahead and got like a super expensive one. Cause I've always actually wanted one of these. I just never really pulled the trigger on getting one. This one right here is a Dremel 8260. This cost me around $170. Uh, like I said, it's one of the pricier ones. So this is a, I believe it's called a carbide burr, B-U-R-R. -R. This honestly cut it really, really good. Got this at like Home Depot or you can go to Amazon there. Pretty cheap, you can get them for like less than $10. Yeah, this thing pretty much just cuts metal, steel, whatever. And uh, it's just an attachment for the Dremel and it works, as you guys saw, it works really, really good. I'll leave the links to all that down in the description below to make it easier for you guys. But yeah, we're pretty much all good to go. I got my headphones on, it's super loud. But yeah, let's go ahead and put the strut back together, put the wheel on on this side and uh, let's see how the camera looks. So with the slot in now, I can show you guys, look how much it can slide now. All that camera right there. Let's push it and then tighten it to lock it in place. Dude, that looks so good. Bro, that looks so fire. Oh, dude, look at that. What do you guys think this is? I think this is like a good negative, I wanna say like a negative seven. That's my guess, let's see. Yeah, that's about right. Dude, that's fire. Literally curves perfect with the body curve. That's honestly what I like. I think it looks so good like that when it kind of matches with the body right there. Happy with how this came out. And dude, look at <laughs> Bro, that's so fire. All right guys, we are on day two of working on the STI. As you guys saw in the previous clips, we were working on slotting the fronts. They're completely done and um, check it out guys. What do you guys think about the fitment? This is looking so freaking good. Kind of the first time seeing the STI with 
both the front and the rear wheels on outside. Today we're actually going to be working on the rears. As you can tell, the rears don't have as much camber as the fronts. You can see from this angle, it's kind of looking like a drift car. <laughs> so today we're going to work on the rears and try to get it to match the fronts just like this. two ways to do camber in the rear for the WRX and the STI. One way, which was originally gonna be the plan, was to just do camber with the lower control arms. But I just learned it is only recommended to run about negative four with the lower control arm. I guess it'll push the axle out because of the all wheel drive system. Something like that, I'm not too informed on it, but that is literally what I just learned. And um, negative four in the rear is not gonna be enough to match the front. So with that being said, I went ahead and got some upper control arms. Now these upper control arms are obviously on the upper side of the wheel. These pretty much act just like a camber plate. So they'll go on the top of the wheel and it'll push the wheel in or outwards. Upper control arms are going to be the solution for this car. Since uppers are pushing and pulling from the top of the wheel, it does not mess with the axles and it doesn't push the axles out. Yeah guys, let's get this on jack stands and uh, let's start cambering the rear. These are the ones I'm actually installing, like I said, P2M rear uppers. They actually fit the FRS BRZ86 as well as the WRX and STI. If you guys don't know, these cars literally share the exact same rear suspensions. But yeah, anyways, in the, um, I guess you can say the details or description, it says all of this, so default with all of this is about negative six maxed out. And uh, once you take off some of the locking rings, as you can see right here, negative eight, and then you take off the other one, negative nine, and then if you remove both, it says negative 10 to 11, so. So yeah, lots of adjustability with uppers. Don't mind my dirty toothbrush. I was actually cleaning all the threads, but anyways, let's go ahead and install the P2M uppers. It's honestly pretty simple, nothing too hard. It's actually two 17 millimeters, so a 17 right there, and then another one right there. It's kind of hard to see. One last one at the top right here, all 17s. Uppers are now installed. I know it's kind of hard to see, but um, right away, you can tell the hub is way tilted in versus before. So we're gonna jack it up. Oh my, bro. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Guys, look at that. Dude, that looks so freaking sick. Guys, that's literally perfect. I kind of like guessed it with the spacer, but dude, it's literally sitting perfectly on the lip. The camera does look like it's matching to the front. Dude, that is so freaking sick. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Look how tight this is, guys. <laughs> so sick. Guys, I'm in love. Dude, the car looks so freaking good. You guys ready to see it? Oh my gosh, bro. Honestly, I feel like this fitment is the best fitment I've ever done on all the cars. Check this out. Here's the front. And then moving to the rears. Guys, we are back in the 
STI. We're actually going to the alignment shop right now. And uh, as you can tell, my steering wheel is literally at like a 45 degree angle. So this alignment is so bad. Um, so we have to get in alignment. The car is right now is driving terrible um, because of all the camber adjustments we did. And uh, as you can tell, my ABS lights turned on as well. So this car is like absolutely freaking out. One thing I forgot to mention was the axle bind. So on the WX and the STI, since it's all wheel drive, you cannot put that much camber on the front of the car. It's kind of happening to me sometimes. Uh, so when you ride actually really low, the axles will bind uh, because as you lower the car, the axles kind of tilt in more. It's kind of recommended to drive at a more higher ride height to prevent axle bind. Once it starts driving a little bit lower than usual, the steering wheel actually starts to shake and uh, you'll be able to tell when you're driving the car. I think the most you can go in the front is about like negative negative eight or nine i want to say if you're static i think you're kind of screwed with axle bind they'll just bind like crazy good thing is if you're back you can raise the car up to prevent axle bind but yeah other than that so far so good the car is fine we just need an alignment because the freaking toe is so bad right now let's go a little test drive my sign did not freaking drive it dude i know 